uh, lecture, I'm going to show you how to develop views off of objects that are at, a, at an odd angle. Like this. You have this view right here. If I highlight right here. This shape is what some of you are concerned about. How do I build that shape? Correct? So the best way to do it, whether you're drawing it by hand or whether you're drawing it on AutoCAD, it doesn't matter. The method to the madness is identical. The first thing you do is start with your line. You, you have to develop your front view first because you're not going to be able to get too far without having your front view developed. So I'm drawing my front view right now. That part you know how to do. That's not an issue for you. Your, your concern is how do you go from this front view to, uh, to a top view or any other angled view. So what was the height? What was the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse, guys? It was 2 plus what? This plus this. 3. Just remember that. Because I'm in AutoCAD, I can just draw a vertical line and then rotate it 45. In here, you actually use your 45 angle. It's much easier for you. For me, I have to go through extra, extra work. And you all know how lazy I am. I hate doing this extra work. <laughs> remember that. Okay? Now this, I honestly don't know how long that back end is. Or do I? What do we know about the 45 degree angle? Yeah, but look, what does that tell me? What do I know from the math perspective what that means? If it's 45 degrees, that means if this side is 3 inches, what's this side? Three. Correct. Because the length of the sides are the same on a 45 degree triangle. And math came from us, not the other way around. Okay, got it? guys, got it? Math is a product of us. We are not a product of math. So anyone, I know they've become the gatekeeper to engineering, but it's wrong. They drew these problems out first, geometry, way before anybody figured out the math equation for geometry. Got it? 45 degrees. The length of the sides are the same. Bingo. That's how you know. That's out of geometry class. Now you know how. You proved it physically. You've drawn it. Now the question that you really have is, um, I, let me set up this entire view first. Before you can start developing your top view, you need to have your front view relatively developed. So now what I'm doing is um, making sure I have my center line of my object in there. See that? <clears throat> that's going to become a center line and then of course I have if it's a diameter of 0.75 what's the radius a diameter of 0.75 what's the radius okay those are the kind of things you want to remember is, is that kind of math because you'll see if it's a diameter of 0.75, that is a radius of 0.375. A diameter of 0.75 is a radius of 0.375. Those are the kind of things that you're, you're going to want to get good at. FYI. You don't have to do too much math, but that type of math is always good to remember. I can learn how to type. That's my current problem. I don't have to type the entire word in, but uh, that's a habit I have. Not extrude. Haha, uh -huh. that's why. Uh, that's a different software package. Instead of trim, I'm extending. So this, in this class, we're not learning AutoCAD. That's why I'm jumping through the commands so fast. What I'm trying to develop here, though, is to make sure you have a view that you could work with. So we're going to have the line types that we need, hidden and center, okay, whoops, jump in there and then jump for center. So these two lines are hidden lines, 
in order in the hand drawing it's so easy you just draw it correctly that's it in AutoCAD I have to go and fix everything so it is more work in AutoCAD so those of you who think AutoCAD's easier it comes with its own set of baggage okay I am going to change their colors for the sake of conversation so you see that distinctly how different they are so that I made that green I'm going to make the center line red just to again for distinction okay So the next thing is my top view, okay? This is what I was saying. You have to move your, to, to develop the top view, I need the front view. Notice that? No, watch. To develop the top view, I need the front view. I have my center line in here of where this is located. Remember that location, it's based on what? The drawing. Right here, the one inch radius. So I can't um, draw my top view without this developed first. I've got to maximize this real quick. When you check your dimensions from here to here, that's one inch. Okay, that defines the center of where this point is, right here. That's what where the red line is. All right, just remember that. So as I carry my lines up to develop my top view, that's what you're working on when I carry this up. So you have a um, 45 triangle or a 30, 60 triangle. All you're doing is putting your T-square across and drawing a vertical line. That's the, you have it actually easier than what I'm doing. When I develop my top view, I'm developing the basic shape. The basic shape, it's a three, see, by five. The five is the same as this bottom five. That doesn't change. So that's why I can carry those lines up. That's the easy part. So that five, that five inches you see there, is the same five inches that this thing is. I'm just showing it to you to show you. See, they're identical. So you have it much easier than I do because all you do is you carry your lines vertically up. The horizontal dimension is this way, here to here. Not horizontal, the, it looks vertical up here. It, that's the three inch mark right here. That's the width of it. That's your rec basic rectangle for the top view. That's this, this shape. Let me switch pens. Okay, there we go. That's this shape right here. Okay? That's all I drew was that rectangle. A much better drawing than my little hand drawing over here with my mouse. Now what you're doing is bringing your other lines up. I'm going to change the color of this to yellow so it looks different. All right? So just watch what it's doing. Is that clear? Made it yellow? Does it look different? Okay, good. Um, you're going to just vertically draw lines at every point. Just like that. What that does for you up here is now you have a reference for where all those lines really appear in the top view. Sure, the way I said that, really appear. You will need a line at the midpoint through the middle of your top view. You will need that. You're going to need that, that a center line through the middle. Okay? That you will need because otherwise you won't be able to develop anything. Now you'll notice this one line right here is also a center line. That you'll be able to do much more neatly and quickly than I just did because you're going to be drawing it by hand so you could start out making it a center line, whereas I can't, all right? These positions, this position and this position, identify this piece, the top of this circle and the bottom of this circle. That's what literally what it identifies. So this line here, 
And this line here defined this position and this position. Up here, this position is defined by where this is, this one. Okay? Everything else is whatever the diameter is. So that 0.375 radius, to make that diameter, that's here. This outside radius is 1, so that's out here. Whoops, I upset the wrong one. So this and this, okay, represent, hold on, one problem with, like I told you, you guys are going to have it much easier than I am. These lines here represent the perimeter of my arcs. They both share the same center, which is nice. So now I told you it's like a smiley is probably the best way when I describe this up front. If I was using AutoCAD, which I am, I could I would use the ellipse command to draw this. And that's how I would develop my objects. So then I would have my center mark to eliminate that element. Then I could start erasing these extra lines. What you have in the end is the shape that it'll look like in that top view. Part of this line here, those two lines, though, they become hidden lines because these two lines here, see this? That defines that depth, but it doesn't define is where it ends. So that's where these lines come in to say, where does that end? Which is a different shape ellipse. It's actually going to be a very elongated type of shape. But you can't draw any of this if you first don't draw your reference geometry to be able to build it. Because this is impossible to, to draw if I didn't have my reference lines in that I carried over from where? my front view, back to that. Okay? And the same for this back object right here. You have to carry your lines up. You can't get this information any other way. And these lines will carry over. Because that's literally how you would develop this shape. There's no other way to do it. You have to have your centers clearly identified. And that center is not. That's, uh, that center is actually in the wrong spot. Your center for your large ellipse is not in the exact same spot. That center is in the wrong spot. That center is actually much higher because that's on a different surface. That's all the way up there. So when you're doing this object, you have to probably take it one layer, one level at a time when you're making it. Because you'll notice The center of the hole is lower than where this piece ends up above. So your centers are in a different spot. So your top view becomes this object. But notice how I had to develop it. Could I develop my top view without my front view? Yes or no? No. Correct. You have to carry your lines up. Because every single element from that, that exists in my top view is a product of me carrying my lines up from my front view, from my fully developed front view. 
So if you don't have a fully developed front view, you cannot make your top view. Got it, guys? You have to remember that. So you're looking for something like this. I'll change the color to yellow before I exit the drawing and, and end this video. But that's how you develop the top view. You can't develop it any other way. All right? Please be aware of that. And that ends this video.